Meanwhile, there are new questions and confusion over President Trump's executive order signed over the weekend, extending unemployment benefits. His orders also cover eviction, student loans, and payroll taxes. He spoke about those last night. ABC's Rena Roy has more. Michigan lawmakers are also responding to the president's orders. Governor Whitmer released a statement last night saying in part, the president's recent actions do nothing to protect the millions of unemployed Americans who need to put food on the table. It's time for the president to do the right thing, stop playing political games, and work with Congress on a recovery package that will help us fight this virus. Senator Debbie Stabenow and Senator Gary Peters also spoke out against the president, saying the orders fall short of what the state needs. We're also following some breaking news overseas. China has announced sanctions against 11 U.S. politicians and heads of organizations promoting democratic causes. Politicians include Senators Marco Rubio and Ted Cruz. A foreign ministry spokesperson says the 11 lawmakers, quote, perform badly on issues concerning Hong Kong. The move comes as China has cracked down on opposition voices following the passing of its national security law last month. This marks the latest escalation between the United States and China. And of course, we will continue to follow the story and provide updates as soon as they become available. Switching gears now, we will talk about, of course, the growing concern about education. School leaders with one of West Michigan's largest school districts will vote on their reopening plans today. Grand Rapids Public Schools is starting to starting the year rather online only for the first nine weeks of the semester, and that starts later this month. The district said virtual learning received the highest level of support in a survey of parents and staff. The school said if and when students return to in-person classes, masks will be expected, but did not say whether the be punishment for not wearing one. The Board of Education will vote to finalize their plan later today. Grand Rapids Police is expected to release their plans to transform policing in our city. A draft of the plan uses a neighborhood-based model to ensure all people feel safe in their community. This comes at a time of civil unrest and protests against law enforcement for policing practices that disproportionately impact people of color. Grand Rapids Police Chief Eric Payne will present the plan to the City Commission Tuesday. The Police Department also plans to launch an online police reform metric dashboard. The dashboard will track six categories, accountability, budget, community engagement, criminal crime statistics, and criminal charge statistics, and staffing data will be collected to educate the community, offer transparency, and evaluate police services while ensuring equity. That dashboard will be launched tomorrow. Also breaking overnight, new developments on the status of college football. This morning, it appears that the major college football conferences are moving closer to either canceling or postponing the football season. Commissioners of the Power Five conferences held an emergency meeting Sunday night among growing concern that fall sports should be put on hold during the, due, the, due to the pandemic. Now, no major decisions were made last night, but ESPN reports the majority of Big Ten presidents have indicated they would vote to either postpone the season, hopefully to next spring. Now, this comes as a growing number of prominent college athletes took to social media to dis dis express their desire to actually play. National champion winning quarterback Trevor Lawrence from Clemson tweeted out an image with the hashtags we are united and we want to play. It says players want to play and asks colleges to establish safety protocols and give players the option to opt out. Several other players across the country have joined Lawrence and the hashtag we want to play movement. So we want to know what do you think should college football be canceled, postponed or go on as scheduled in the fall. So head on over to 13 on your side.com slash vote and let your voice be heard. And it looks like almost two thirds of people say we should be canceling college football. And while just under a third say to continue as scheduled. I know personally as the resident athlete here in the studio <laughs> uh, that I wouldn't play this year, if, especially if you're a high profile guy like Trevor Lawrence, the risk of playing one getting hurt, but the risk of getting sick can have uh, substantial damage on your future as a professional athlete. So I wouldn't play this year. Yeah, James, I want to ask you, what do you think about the idea of postponing maybe to the spring? Well, I was a two sport athlete in college, so I, I can see a lot of guys who play football, also run track in the spring. Mm -hmm. So that could also pose a conflict with guys who are either trying to wait until the spring to play, but then you end up losing a season like, you know, track as well. So I don't, I, I feel like what the answer to your question in, in, the, in a quicker manner is that you end up having essentially two seasons. You play in the spring, then you play again in the fall. I don't think it's worth it.
Yeah, lots of people obviously watching this closely. Laura, what are your welcome back? The United States Postal Service says it lost $2.2 billion between the months of April and the end of June. Officials warned the agency's losses could top $20 billion in just two years. This as the new Postmaster General denies reports that the Postal Service is slowing down election mail. He says USPS has the ability to deliver all election mail securely and on time for the November election. Even so, he warns without help from Congress, the agency's position isn't good. And of course, the upcoming election is shining a light on those issues at the Postal Service. There's expected to be a significant increase in mail-in ballots. So we're sharing five tips on how to do so and make sure your vote gets counted. Jacobson Heating and Cooling. Welcome back. Golf was finally able to complete its first major of the year this weekend, and the victory went to a 23-year-old playing in just his second major tournament. Colin Morikawa took the PGA Championship, highlighted by this incredible-looking tee shot as he'd hit the green on that par 4 16. Now, Morikawa sunk the putt for eagle and then went on to win by two strokes. And his trophy ceremony, also eventful. Take a look at this. Oh boy. <laughs> Not too shabby, but you might want to keep a closer, tighter grip on that trophy there. He also pocketed a cool two million bucks for that win. Not a bad weekend at the office, if you ask me. Now, earlier we told you about major college football conferences considering postponing or even canceling the fall football season. But we already know the Mac will not be playing this fall. The conference announced over the weekend it is indeed postponing all fall sports. That includes uh, Western Michigan, Central Michigan, and as well as Eastern Michigan. Thank you, Dave. A skydiver needed some help from first responders last night in Ottawa County. Around 8.20 last night, crews were called out to an area of Grand Haven County where a skydiver was stuck in a tree. The skydiver was about 75 feet in the air, rather, and had to be rescued by the Grand Haven Fire Department. Thankfully, no one was hurt. However, four people are hurt after a crash in Ottawa County over the weekend. Two of them, seriously. An 18-year-old was driving a pickup truck when deputies say he blew through a stop sign at 144th and Tyler Street. A van with eight people inside struck the truck and both vehicles were pushed off the road. The driver of the van and one passenger sustained non-life-threatening injuries. The driver of the truck and a 16-year-old passenger both went to the hospital with serious injuries. In Grand Rapids, an 11 drunken driver crashed into two homes this past weekend. This happened around 1230 Saturday afternoon. The homes are on Fuller Avenue near Leonard Street. That driver was arrested for operating while intoxicated. Despite that damage, no one was hurt yet once more. Thank you, Laura. Now, if you haven't yet, please join our 13 Food for Families campaign. That money will go to several local organizations helping feed families all across West Michigan. Details on how to donate are right there on your screen. There's also more information online at 13onyourside.com slash hunger. If you can't donate today, that's all right. This campaign will be running throughout the summer. The time right now is 642 and the debate over how to reopen schools during the pandemic. Coming up, how those decisions are actually impacting small businesses. Stay with us. You're watching 13 on your side mornings. Welcome back. Now we do continue to keep an eye on how the pandemic is affecting small businesses across our state. And once again, we are happy to be joined this morning by the president of Michigan Small Business Association, Brian Kelly. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. Great to be with you again. Now, Brian, now everyone's aware about the debate surrounding in-person schooling, and that actually has a ripple effect on small businesses. What are you recommending to your members about how to handle employees who have to stay home with their children? Well, first is to, to get engaged and get involved. This has really risen up to one of the top issues that we hear about from our members. It is the, uh, the lack of the ability of, uh, or to, to find child care. And that, of course, is very tied to the lack of availability of uh, school in some districts around the state. But thankfully, many, many school districts are giving a, 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 an option, either go full virtual or they have some in-person education as part of it. Now, Brian, many small business owners are parents themselves. Have you heard anything from them as far as the struggles of running a business while also dealing with the uncertainty around the school year? Yeah, there's nothing like uncertainty to put a damper on economic activity. And this really is one of the main, main issues that business owners are facing right now for themselves, but also for their employees, 
in terms of of, uh, of of having the stability and the availability of uh, high quality child care and education uh, for children. So th this really has gone from an issue that people were concerned about before to being one of or maybe even the top issue facing small businesses today. Now, Brian, we've got about a minute left, and President Trump signed executive orders over the weekend. Do you see those having any substantial impact on Michigan small businesses, and are there any additional steps you're hoping the president or Congress will take? Well, we're hoping that, um, that another round of Paycheck Protection Program funding will go to help those businesses most severely impacted. We know that there are some that are still closed down today by order of the government. They do need additional help, but we're also hopeful that um, that they can strike a deal with what the new un unemployment uh, insurance situation looks like. In, uh, in addition to, uh, you know, I know there's debate around the payroll tax cut and things of that nature as well. We need stability and predictability. Brian Callity, president of Michigan Small Business Association. Brian, we thank you for your time again. Thank you so much.